It's a big day for football fans. The NFL Combine kicks off today in Indianapolis, but here in Las Vegas, we're already looking forward to the draft and the arrival of the Raiders. Joining us live right now to break it all down is ESPN NFL analyst Lewis Riddick. Lewis, so great to have you with us here on the news at midday. We're going to talk about the uh, about the draft, first of all, because there's a lot of excitement here in Las Vegas about hosting for the first time. I know you have attended a few drafts in your day. What do you think, what can you expect in terms of the spectacle of Las Vegas hosting for the first time? Yeah, I think there's going to be a ton of excitement. Look, I'm excited to come out there and call it and be out there at Caesars Palace. I mean, it, it doesn't get any bigger as far as the lights, the camera, the action of Las Vegas. Everybody knows that that's the, like the entertainment capital of the world where the lights shine the brightest. You know, big time fights happen out there in boxing and UFC has its headquarters out there. It's just going to be one of those places and one of those nights that I expect to be absolutely electric. I know the league is fired up about it. ESPN's fired up about it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And of course... The Raiders are fired up about it, and that stadium is looking spectacular. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to get out there. Let's talk a little bit about the Raiders. It seems like every pundit I have read so far seems to believe that the team is going to be targeting a number one wide receiver at the top of the draft. It seems like they think that's the biggest need for the team. What do you think is the biggest need for the team? you think they should target a receiver at the top of the first round? Yeah, I think there's a number of different areas that they can go with it. I think the best players, the most impactful players, players that can score points or players that can put quarterbacks on their back and keep points off the board. That's where the biggest impact, the biggest bang for your buck is gotten in the draft if you can find someone who's good enough to do that. There's going to be a wide receiver there in order to help them do that. And there's going to be guys who have all different body types, shapes, and sizes, but mainly they're going to have a lot of speed. So I think there's no doubt that they're going to target one with one of their two first-round picks, and they'll get a good one. And then it's just going to be up to them to develop them, keep them healthy, and just get them on the same, same page with the quarterback and let them go. I got to ask you about the quarterback position because Derek Carr is under contract, but the team really hasn't made a commitment publicly to continuing to go forward with Derek Carr. What do you think the team should do at quarterback? Because yeah. this is also one of the most exciting free agent quarterback classes, and there's always some big name prospects in the draft. What do you think the team should do at quarterback? Yeah, I think one of the best things that teams can do for their own sake and for the sake of doing right by the player is kind of just make a decision about what, what, which way you're going to go with it. Now, I know there's always uncertainty as to who's going to be available and who you can actually get, but as soon as you can to really make a declaration about what position, which way you're going to go with it. Look, Derek Carr, for all intents and purposes, statistically, had his best season of his career last year, minus the number of touchdown passes that he threw, which isn't always the quarterback's fault. All right, They, they were devoid of weapons on the outside. They were counting on some people to make some big contributions that just weren't there for him. But as far as yardage, completion percentage, yards per attempt. I mean, this, this guy was really, he was top in all of his career numbers. So I just think they need to decide whether or not Derek's going to be that guy to usher in this new era or not. So they can plan accordingly to get someone else in there, both in the short term, whether that be a veteran, or drafting a guy for the long term or doing both. Signing a, a guy as a veteran, using him as a bridge, drafting a young guy. So they, have, so they have a plan here for the future. John's supposed to be there, John Gruden, for a long time. So, so he has to have a plan, not just for 2020, to make sure that fan base feels good about the direction of this football team, but for the future as well. Because as we know, people ex expect sustained success. They don't expect flashes in the pan. And when you invest the kind of money that they have in Gruden, we know this team wants to win now. It's going to be fascinating to see what they do with the quarterback position. Now, Lewis, uh, I'm going to leave you with this. I know you are a uh, big talent evaluator. I think you're the best in the business when it comes to that. What do you look for as you go to the combine, uh, especially this year when there's so much talent? Yeah, I, I think the thing that the combine really gives you is a, an, a way to really see everybody on a level playing field as far as whether it be with their medical evaluations, with their personal and football character evaluations in the meeting room setting, and then when you're evaluating their character out here on the field before they get tested, and then seeing them actually go through all the same drills under the same kind of environment and the same kind of conditions. I just like to see the competitive nature of these young men and see them willing, to, willing and able to be able to step up to the challenge here. Obviously, the character profiles that you get on these guys when you're able to sit in these formal meetings and talk to them, and even in the informal meetings, is crucial. 
the most crucial thing about this environment and about this this whole thing that you, that is called the NFL scouting combine is making sure you get the medical evaluations right because that's the one thing you can't get wrong. You're always going to miss on players from an evaluation standpoint on the field and maybe about their personal character itself, but you can't get the medical evaluations wrong. That's why it's so critical the days that you're here as a front office guy and as a coach and as a scout. And I, I look, I, I've always loved the entire process. Everyone gets hyped up about the things on the field, how fast the guy runs his 40, his vertical, his broad and all. But we all know the game is played much differently once you strap on a helmet and put on some shoulder pads and put some pads in your pants and guys are banging on you. We all know that it, changed, it, it renders a lot of this stuff out here a moot point. But it's still an exercise you need to go through. You need to embrace it. It is kind of fun. It's football. We get paid to really evaluate football players and build football teams. Stop complaining. It's a, it's a good thing to have. It's a good thing to do. We have seen the combine make guys. We've also seen it break guys. Lewis Riddick, thank you so much for the time. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back.